verses 1, 2, and 3. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Somebody give him glory. Come on, let him know that he is a great God. Magnify his name. Your great God. Your great God. Come on, tell him. Your great God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hand. Your great God, come on, declare it. I don't care what it is you're facing. Let it go. Your great God, greater than my circumstances, greater than my situation. Your great God, greater than my trials and troubles. Hallelujah. Your great, your great God. Hallelujah. Your great, your great God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Father, we just thank you in this atmosphere, God. You're going to do a phenomenal thing, a phenomenal move, God. We're declaring, hallelujah, in this season of blessings and breakthrough, God, that you're going to have your way, God. Like never before, God, we're going to see miracle signs and wonders follow us, God, because we believe, God, that you're going to do mighty works in me. We believe, God, that you are the risen Savior. We believe that you are Lord and Master. We believe that you are God and King. Hallelujah. You're the ruler of heaven and earth, God. So have your way in this sanctuary in these broken vessels God do what you want to do God hallelujah bless the worship that comes forth God in the name of Jesus receive it as a sweet smelling savor in your nostrils God have a, let us have an experience with you like never before God in the name of Jesus show yourself mighty and strong God show up and show out in the house today God bless the pastor as he brings forth the word God that will pierce our hearts cause us to shift and change that and change our mindsets God Hallelujah. Bring us to the place of repentance and deliverance, God. We need you today. We desire you, Lord. So have your way in the service. And we say in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen. And we declare that you are a great God. Hallelujah. You're a great God. Come on and tell the Lord that this morning. Hey, you're a great God. He's worthy of all the praise. You're a great God. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. You're a great God. Hey, we give you all the praise. You're a great God. Hey, you made a way out of the way. You're a great God. We bless your holy name. You're a great God. Hey, you can do anything but fail. You're a great God. So we glorify you in the sanctuary. You're a great God. If you believe it today, help me say, You're a great God. Hey, say it one more time. You're a great God. Yeah, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. Come on and glory. By him right there hallelujah if he's been great in your life on today I dare you to tell somebody and make some noise come on make the devil mad this morning come on and let somebody know that he's been good to you that he's been better than good to you come on and share with somebody how good he is in your life if you know that he's been good just wave your hands and proclaim it into the heavens on today God we celebrate you because you are good Hallelujah, you've been good, God. And we magnify you in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. The Lord is great. Hallelujah. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountains of his holiness. Hallelujah. We come to saturate this place with praise and let somebody know that he's great today. Hallelujah. 
we give him honor and we give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are and celebrate the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. 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 He is great. Hallelujah. We thank him on today. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody he's worthy to be praised this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody else he's worthy to be praised this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Give me a little more track, please. Yeah, 
Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Magnify him in the sanctuary on today. Let somebody know he's been great. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. 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 Hallelujah, Lord, we lift you up. Come on, give him some praise right there. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a celebration Sunday on today. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Don't stop. Put your hands together. Somebody open your mouth and give God a praise. Somebody shout out, Lord, you're mighty. <laughs> you are mighty, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. You're mighty, God. 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 Who is this King of glory? He's the Lord God, strong and mighty. You're mighty, God. You're mighty, God. You're mighty, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, put your hands together right there. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty he is. The Lord God mighty in battle. No powerful as him. Hey, said who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty he is. The Lord.
God, come on, come on, bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah, come on, come on, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on, bless him. Just because the music stops doesn't mean your praise stops. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is worthy, he is worthy. He is worthy. How many of you know he is the way maker? He is a way maker. Any witnesses in the house, he is the way maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands and begin to worship him. Hallelujah.
turning life around Worship you Worship you You are here Mending every heart Now worship you I worship you Oh you are here, turning lies around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you.
Just give God some worship right there. Hallelujah. If that's who he's been to you. If that's who he's been to you, come on. Lift your hands in the sanctuary and worship it right there. If that's who he is, hallelujah. That's who he is, hallelujah. That's who you are, God. You're wonderful. You're magnificent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. God, we just love on you right now because you've been a miracle worker for us, God. We lift our hands as an act of surrendering, God, because it's been you all along. Hallelujah. We celebrate on today, God, the fact that you are big enough to do anything but fail, God. We come before your presence today, bowing, God, and celebrating you and living to you, God, saying thank you for being that God that healed me, for saying thank you for making ways out of no way, for saying thank you, God, for turning things around, God. It's been you all alone, God. Nothing we could have done, nothing we could have said, God, that could have made it better, but it took your hand of mercy to touch us, oh God, to, to bring us up out the miry clay, God, to move things out the way, God, so that we can hear you, God, so that we can feel you, God, so that we can even see you, God, so we celebrate God. That's who you are. Hallelujah. Come on. That is who you are. Come on, everybody. That is who you are. 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 Let him hear you. That is who you are. Come on, saints. That is who you are. Let everybody know. That is who you are. That is who you are. Let them know on the line today. That is who you are. Come on. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. How many of you? Hey, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Hey, you've been my way maker, way maker, miracle worker. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you've been my way maker, way maker, miracle. I'm promised. Light in the darkness, my God, yeah, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, 
in the darkness My God, yeah, yeah. that is who you are okay, okay. Come on, tell them that today The way you make a miracle work Promise keep light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Oh, he's mighty good today Way make miracle work Promise keep light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Lord, you way make a way make Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Take it on out right here. That is who you are. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we make it. Hallelujah. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That is who you are. That is who you are. Lord, you way maker miracle worker you've been a promise keeper light in the darkness Lord that is who you are 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 That is who you me besides still waters. He restoreth my soul. When you become a believer, your spirit is made right. But sometimes, the soul doesn't get the notice. It has a hold in it due to things that's happened in the past. Hurt, abuse, molestation. But we want to speak to you today and tell you that God wants to heal the hole in your soul. Some people's actions are not because their spirit is wrong, but it's because the past has left a hole in their soul. May this wisdom help you get over your past and remind you that God wants to heal the hole in your soul. I have my sister Leandria here. She's going to help me share this wisdom and tell this story. Cause all I seem to do is hurt me
This is your exodus. Hallelujah. Come on. This is your exodus. This is the perfect place to release it. Need to run that back. Need to run that back. Run it back. Hallelujah. With a declaration, a decree. So I'm speaking for all of you listening, starting here, starting now. The things that hurt you in the past won't control your future. Starting now. This is a new day. This is your exodus. You are officially released. Now sing it for me, Leandria. This is my exodus. Receive it in Jesus' name.
Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead and put your hands together if you know this to be your exodus. Hallelujah. 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 Deliverance is in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I don't know about you, my friends, but that's a word from the Lord. This is my exodus. This is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For whom the Son has made free. Come on, Holy Ghost. He is free indeed. This is, come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. My exodus. Hallelujah. Be free today. Be whole today. Rise and be healed today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. Bless you, young man. We thank God for how he used you on this morning to bless the house, to bless the nation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, there's some things in my life that I need the Lord to deliver me from. Come on, Holy Ghost. This ain't the time, amen, to be sitting down on the Lord. This ain't the time, amen, to be thinking that we all right. This is not the time, hallelujah, to think we got it all together. We need a deliverance from the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Deliverance in our mind, deliverance in our attitude, deliverance in our spirit, deliverance in the way we walk, in the way we talk. Deliverance is in the house this morning. The songwriter said, Lord, deliver me. For this is my exodus. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. For the mighty move of God in your ministry and in your heart. May God be with you, my man, my brother. Hallelujah. The favor of God is on your life. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God. The favor of God is on his life. Hallelujah. And the favor of God is on your life, family. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. One more time. Put your hands together. Open your mouth and give God a great praise. Hallelujah. For who he is and what he is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. There is no other name than the name of Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And we bless his holy and righteous name. Glory to God. What a, what a time and to be in the house of God this morning. Again, we welcome you to the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries with none other than Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name for you this morning. We thank God that you were able to come out to be with us in the house of God. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is flowing. Hallelujah. Will you help me celebrate the Lord Jesus for our family and friends that are watching us over the internet this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just welcome them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. To the ministry today. We thank God for you. We bless God for you. And we pray, amen, that the Spirit of God, hallelujah, is doing what he wants to do in your life, even in your homes on this morning. Glory to God. There is a word from the Lord. And we thank God for Elder Craig, Elder Ron McCall, Brother Tim. We thank God for them. We thank God for our sacred dancers, amen, and the ministry that they've offered and rendered unto the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, just for a little while, my friends, before we get into the Word of God, uh, I want to share with you that on this coming Saturday, uh, we will be hosting our Back to School Jam. Amen. Our Back to School Jam, where we uh, serve with our community. When we don't serve for them, but we serve with them. Amen. That we might glorify God, hallelujah, uh, in this 
house and in this community. Our first our annual, well, this is not our first, but this is our annual uh, back to school jam, uh, August 21st from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. We invite you to come out and enjoy the presence of the Lord as we have fun with our young people, with our families, and with our community. Uh, we have several things that's going to be taking place. We have food, we have music, entertainment, uh, we have games, we have uh, clothing for all ages. Clothing for all ages. We have book bags and supplies. We also will have furniture man. Brother Pete Dahl will be here from Christian Life Center. He's going to be giving out couches, chairs, tables. Amen. Now, if you're coming to get furniture, you got to have a way to get it home. We're not moving no furniture this Saturday. Amen. But if you want it, it'll be here. We invite you to come out and receive from the Lord on our back to school jam on August the 21st, 2021. Amen. For those of you, the family members or family and friends that are connected here at the Potter's House, we would invite you, if you can, amen, to purchase two book bags filled with supplies. Amen. Two book bags filled with supplies from each household. Amen. And I believe we will have more than enough to be a blessing to this community and beyond. So if you would help us, amen, to be a blessing, we will help us to serve the Lord. And if you would help us, amen, to glorify the kingdom of God, we invite you to do that and just bring them to the church. Amen. Bring them to the church sometime this week. Uh, someone will be here in the office between 9 and 1 o'clock p.m., uh, 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, and if you can't get here during the week because you're working, then come also on Saturday morning. We'll be here early Saturday morning. You can drop those book bags and supplies off, and there'll be someone here to receive them. Amen. We thank God for you. We bless God for you. And we look forward to seeing you on Saturday, the 21st of August. All right. Let's put your hands together for our opportunity to serve this community in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for all your support. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for our bishop, Bishop Mark T. McGuire Sr. and Lady Angela down in Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. We bless God for them. Uh, we thank God. I think Bishop will be back in town sometime in October. And so we look forward to hosting him and having him and Lady Angela here with us. And so keep that on your calendar. Amen. All, uh, sometime in October, around October the 10th, 11th or 12th, somewhere around there, our bishop will be here with us and we look forward to having him with us. All right, uh, we give God praise uh, for our grandparents in the ministry, Bishop Bob McLaughlin and Lady Narlene, uh, pastors of the Jacksonville Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. We thank God for Bishop Vaughn and Lady Narlene. We also give God glory uh, for our uh, ministerial staff here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries, our elder council, our ministerial staff, our executive administration. And may continue to pray for elder, um, I'm sorry, Minister LJ uh, while she's uh, traveling. Uh, keep her and her family lifted up. Uh, we also remember Elder Lonzo. Amen. He will be back with us here in a few days. Amen. We bless the Lord for him. Hallelujah. We thank God that she has to continue to pray for him and his family, Lady Iris and all of those. Amen. We thank God for all of them. Hallelujah. And we thank God for you, man and woman of God. Uh, what an what a awesome time to be in the house of the Lord. I appreciate you taking the risk and coming out to be in the house of God. Amen. We need to get back, amen, to the house of God. We need to get back to worshiping and fellowshipping one with another. Amen. I know we got all kind of things going on. I know the, the virus, amen, the Delta virus and all these things are still a uh, uh, raging uh, war in the world. But amen, we walk by faith, not by sight. We'll wear a mask if we have to. We'll sanitize our hands if we have to. We'll social distance if we have to. We'll do whatever we got to do. But we will worship and fellowship in the presence of an almighty God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And last but not least, we give God glory for the angel of my heart. Will you help me celebrate our God for our first lady, Lady Isabel Moss? in the house this morning. We thank God for you. Amen. We bless God for you, sir. The Bible says, give honor where honors do. Amen. And so we try to do that each and every day and each and every week of our lives. We love you and we thank God for you. Amen. Now, if you will, turn with me in your word. Our focal peripheries will be coming from Luke chapter 19, verse 26. Uh, and Hebrews 11, verse 1 and verse 6. Just for a little while, I would like to speak with us on this subject. Obedience to God is worth 
the risk. Obedience to God is worth the risk. Luke 19, 26, according to the message, and Hebrews 11, 1, verse 6, according to the New King James Version. Those that are able to stand with us, we would invite you to do so now, as it is accustomed to the reading of God's word. Luke 19, 26, the word of God reads as follows. He said, that's what I mean. Risk your life and get more than you ever dreamed of. Play it safe and end up holding the bag. Amen. Hebrews 11, verse 1, and Hebrews 11, verse 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wave at your neighbor as you take the seats and let them know that you're glad to have them in the house of God this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we bless you this morning. We honor you, sir. We celebrate your holy name. We thank you for last night's lying down, for this early morning rising. We thank you for what our hearts have felt and our ears have heard, even as we've entered into this house of worship. Thank you for the men and women of God who, who gave their all in service in worship unto you. We thank you for every hand clap, every hand wave, every hallelujah, every thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for every one, Lord God, that have lifted their voices and their hearts unto you. And we continue to take a risk. A risk, Lord God, believing that something is about to happen in our life. Thank you for the shift that's taking place in and around this country, in and around this city, in and around our community, in and around our church. Every life, every home, every family, hallelujah, be glorified. May your name be risen high and lifted up that all men might know that Jesus still saves, Jesus still heals, Jesus still delivers and sets the captors free. Thank you. Hallelujah. This is our exodus. This is our day of salvation. This is our day of deliverance. This is our day, Lord God, to be with Jesus the Christ. Have your way today. Speak to our lives. Speak to our hearts. Hallelujah. Allow your word to come alive. That we would know without assurance that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that you're working all things together for the good of your people. We love you, sir. We honor you, God. And we bless your holy name. Speak to us now. Your servants are listening. And we're ready to receive and apply this holy and righteous word. We love you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, the people of God said amen, amen, and amen again. Come on, one more time. Bless the name of the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. If God, my friends, if God tells you to take a step of faith, but you hesitate to take it until he shows you what the second step looks like or what the second step will be. I suggest to you, my friends, that you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Amen. 
God uses risk, large and small, to push us into deeper faith. And so he wants us to step forward in our faith this morning, even if we don't know where the second step will take us. The not knowing is what requires faith. And the not knowing compels us to rely on God to guide us forward. Does anybody trust in God this morning to guide you forward? Hallelujah. Regardless of what we see on the other side of a God-directed risk, the reality is, is that God is there with you. What seems to be a no-guaranteed situation actually comes with the greatest guarantee of all, a God guarantee, hallelujah, that he's working in your life. The two scriptures that we read this morning, uh, 11, Hebrews 11, 1 and 6, uh, Romans, I mean, if we go back to when we read Romans 8 and 28, and we looked at uh, 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 Luke this morning, Luke 19 and 26, amen, is, is, is all of these are God-centered uh, uh, promises, amen, that God has invited us to, to take. I'm, 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 I'm grateful this morning for Luke 19, 26, where Jesus said that, uh, where the man of God said, that's what I mean, risk your life and get more than you ever dreamed of. Risk your life. For who? Risk your life for Jesus Christ. Risk your life for serving him. Risk your life for depending only on him. Risk your life, hallelujah, and receive more than you could ever dream of, more than you could ever imagine. However, if you want to play it safe, glory to God, you're going to be stuck holding the bag of trouble. Holding the bag of issues and complaint. Hallelujah. But Paul reminded us, the Hebrew writer reminded us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Other words, my friends, we got to take a risk in Christ. We got to take a risk that God is going to do what God said he's going to do. We got to take a risk. We got to walk out on faith. We got to stand on the word of God. We got to believe, amen, that if God be for us, who can be against us? We got to know down in our knower, hallelujah, that no matter what's going on God is on our side hallelujah reach out and take the risk glory to God take the risk I heard Donald Trump say what you got to lose <laughs> glory to God. what do we have to lose to take a risk on trusting God hallelujah regardless of what we see on the other side and watch this. This is a God-directed risk. This is a risk that God is calling us to make. The reality is he wants us to understand that even in the fact that we are taking a risk, hallelujah, you know how it is. Sometimes we don't, we're not sure if God is telling us to go this way or to go that way. We're not sure if God is speaking or if it's our own mind speaking or if it's somebody else speaking. We're not sure, amen. But God is saying this morning, take a risk and trust in me. God said the reality is he is there with you, amen. He will lead, he will lead you in the way that you are to go. What seems to be a no guarantee situation actually comes with the greatest guarantee of all. A God guarantee. Hallelujah. A guarantee from God that he is working in your life. The very fact that you rose up this morning and came out to the, to the house of God, the very fact, amen, that you came in to the sanctuary of the Lord this morning is clear indicator that God is working in your life. Hallelujah. The very fact, amen, that you were able, amen, to come out, amen, and give God glory is an indicator that God is working in your life. Romans 8 and 28 reminds us, and we know this risk of obedience, my friend, will cause us, amen, to know that all things are working together for good. 
to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And we know, say that to yourself, and I know, glory to God, and I know that all things work together for good for them that love God, for them who are the called according to his purpose. As believers, my friend, believers of Jesus Christ, we can be confident that God works in all the circumstances of our life. He's working to accomplish his good purpose for you. This is one of the great promises that we find in scripture. However, we must also know that the good, glory to God, is not necessarily what we might think is good, but it's what God deems, glory to God, to be best to assist our growth and our maturity in the image of pride. I, I, I'm reminded, uh, my brother took a trip, <laughs> glory to God, and, and, and me and one of the elders, you know, we, we, we rolled with him, and when we got down there, he said, man, y'all done brought me down here to Beirut, glory to God. But what he didn't know, amen, that God had him in what he called Beirut, because God had a plan for his life, to minister unto the lives of those that God would allow him to engage. I'm here to tell you sometimes, my friends, what looks not to be good in your life is good according to God's plan because God knows the good that he's going to bring out of the situation that you might find yourself in. Hallelujah. It might not look good to you, but I promise you, God is working all things for good in your life. Hallelujah. And if you just hold on and trust in God, you're going to see the good that God has coming out of your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is able to bring maturity and growth into the image of Christ and bring these men and women that God may have you uh, 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 engaged with or that God may have you surrounded with, that God may be calling you to deal with, to work with, that God might get the final glory. With this guarantee, my friends, you can enter into this risky obedience of attempting things that are impossible unless God gives you his strength to do them. We know, my friends, this morning that nothing, no thing is impossible with God. All things are possible through Christ Jesus. With this guarantee from God, we can enter into this risky obedience of loving other believers so deeply and so richly that you prove to the world that God's love is flowing through you. I don't care who they are, amen. They may have dogged you out. They may have talked about you like a dog. They may have treated you undeservingly. Un, uh, hallelujah. Whatever the case is, hallelujah. We can love them with the love of Christ, hallelujah, because we're walking in obedience to the word of the Lord. And God says, amen. We have a way of proving to the world, hallelujah, that the love of God still flows through the church of God's people, through the house of God, through the kingdom of God, through the believers of God. Can you say amen? With this guarantee, family, we can also enter into this risky obedience of loving your unlovable neighbors. Come on, Holy Ghost. We can love our neighbors just as God loved us, even when we seemed unlovable. Amen. You remember the time, amen. You remember how we used to be, amen. You know how we are even now sometimes, hallelujah. We, we, we unlovable sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to even be around us, amen, because we're mean and nasty and we got attitudes and we're doing things and saying things, amen, and we're snapping at folks, amen. Sometimes we can be unlovable, but God's love is forever toward us. Hallelujah. And if God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. If God so loved the world, who are we not to love the world and want to see them saved by the grace of the living God? Hallelujah. We have a guarantee from God that we can walk in obedience of loving the unlovable. Just as God loved us, when we, too, were unlovable. 
The third one, my friends, with this guarantee from God, we can enter into this risky obedience of changing our priorities to match God's priority. Amen. Sacrifice in faith what we cannot keep for the things that we can never be taken away. There's some things God is saying we cannot keep. We cannot hold on to. We can't continue, amen, to drag this stuff along with us. There are some things God is trying to break us from, shake us from, take from us. There are some things God wants to do in our life, amen. But we keep carrying baggage and carrying old things and old people. Carry. Now, when I say old people, I'm not talking about our elders. I'm talking about folk, amen that God been telling you to leave alone for a long time and for whatever reason you keep dragging them on amen trying to change folk trying to make folk trying to tell folk amen and God said no, God did not call you to be God for nobody's life come on Holy Ghost God did not call us to be God for nobody else's life. He is God. He is the one that changes the heart. He's the one that makes the difference. He's the one amen that saves and sets free and if there are folk in our life that are causing us, amen, not to be able to walk in the obedience of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God is saying, get rid of them in Jesus' name. And we'll get too many amens on that. Because some of us are holding on to folk because they make us feel good. We're holding on to folk and holding on to things, amen, hallelujah, because they make us feel good, amen. And just because it makes you feel good don't mean it's good for you. Can you say amen? This guarantee, we can enter into obedience of changing our priorities. Hallelujah. What you cannot keep for the things that we can never be taken away. 1 John 2 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hallelujah. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. You know, I, I just sense in my spirit right there because... Uh, we just got through quoting uh, uh, John 3.16 that God so loved the world. And so here we are now reading in 1 John 2.16 love not the world. This is not talking about but when we're talking about love the world we're talking about love the people in the world. God loves the people of the world. God don't want no man to die and go to hell. God wants all to be saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He, he says love the world. He's talking about love the people of the world. The problem is we hate the people and we love the things of the world. God is trying to get, we got that thing backwards. God is trying us to hate the things of the world and love the people of the world. In spite of who they are, where they come from, what they look like, how what color they are. God says love the people of the world that they all might be saved. For all that is in the world, he's talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, all those things, amen, that keep us tied up, tangled up, bound up in sin. Jesus says, the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. First Chronicles 28 and 9, verse 10. As for you, my son, Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found of you by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Somebody say do it. Hallelujah. God is calling us, hallelujah, to build our homes, our house our tabernacles, amen, uh, as a sanctuary unto the Lord. He said, consider now, for the Lord has chosen you 
God has chosen you, amen, to be used for the kingdom of God. God has chosen you, hallelujah, to allow him to use you as his hands and feet in the earth. God has chosen you, amen, that you might be a vessel of honor unto the Lord right here in your community. Hallelujah. Be strong and do it. With this guarantee, my friends, you can engage in this risky obedience of making disciples of all people. Teaching them that the obedience and following Jesus Christ comes from a God guarantee. God guarantees that we will have eternal life if we trust him, if we walk in his ways, if we follow him and, and follow his commandments. God guarantees amen that you will have life and have it more abundantly it's a God guarantee for the man and woman of God who trust in the Lord Matthews 28 19 and 20 according to the Amplified Bible he said go then and make disciples of all nations baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you and behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion, to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. God is saying, so let it be. Amen. God will do exactly what he said he'll do. He says, I am with you all the days of your life. Perpetually I'm with you. Uniformly I'm with you. On every occasion, on every occasion, I don't care what it is, I don't care what's going on, I don't care what it looks like, I don't care what they say, on every occasion, you can be confident that God is with you, saints. You can be confident that God is with you on every occasion to the very close and consummation of the age. In other words, to the end of the earth, to the end of the world, God is with you. And then it ends with amen, hallelujah, so be it, glory to God. Somebody say, so be it, he's with me. So be it, he is with us, hallelujah. So we can walk in obedience, we can walk, we can take the risk of trusting God with our family, with our future, and with our present. We can take the risk of trusting God to do in our business what he says he'll do. We can take the risk, hallelujah, of trusting God for our children and for their future. Obedience always brings blessing. Obedience always brings blessing. Luke 11 and 28 says this, but he said, yeah, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessings comes, blessings follows obedience. Hallelujah. According to the message, that same verse, Jesus commented, even more blessed are those who hear God's word and guard it with their lives. We ought to guard the word of God, thanks, with our lives. Guard it with our lives. The Amplified reads 1128, Luke. But he said, blessed, happy, and to be envied, rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it and practice it. Blessed, happy, and to be envied are those who hear the word of God, obey the word of God, and practice the word of God. My friends, I submit to us this morning that it takes risky obedience to hear the word of God. Because we got all kind of things vying for our attention. We got all kind of things pulling on us on a daily basis, 24-7. Folk are, things are pulling at us. Things are demanding our attention. Things are trying to get us, amen, over here and over there and over there. And so we, we have to, we have to take a risk, amen, in obeying and hearing the word of God. Obeying the word of God and practicing the word of God. We take this risk because taking 
this risk shows that we're taking a chance and believing that something good is going to happen in our life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we fight the fate of risk. We fight the fate of the faith of fight. We fight the fate, the faith fight. We fight the faith fight. And we walk out in obedience, being assured of our hope in Christ Jesus. Psalm 146, verse 5 and 6. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is their maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. Hallelujah. I know sometimes for our, for our young people, it's hard to believe that God remains faithful forever. But if you ask some of our seniors, amen, if you ask some of our elderly, amen, they'll tell you, amen, God is faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's always an on-time God. He shows up right on time. Hallelujah. He's never late. Hallelujah. He's always on time. And the writer said, he may not come when you're wanting, but he's always on time. God is a faithful God, and he remains faithful forever. The Psalms, my friends, in 146 is rich with promise of hope for today and for our future. It, it begins by praising the Lord, and then it offers us reasons for such praise and urges us to hope in the Lord and ask him for help. I don't know about you, my friends, but do you know what it feels like to be without hope? Stuck in behaviors that you can't seem to change? Or in circumstances that leave you powerless? Where you look ahead and see only darkness? When people are without hope and without help in their lives, they can fall prey to anxiety and depression. They begin to seek relief and addiction and all kind of other things, amen, in our efforts uh, uh, to medicate uh, the pain in their life. Or they end up living with the heavy weight of oppression and bondage. And I believe, my friends, that there is help and reassuring hope for those who trust in the Lord. Uh, this Psalms 146, beginning in verse 7, it outlines, amen, the promises and the reason that we should hope in the Lord. But the Bible says he upholds the cause of the oppressed and he gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners, prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. Uh, let me go back. He, the Lord sets prisoners free. He's not just talking about, amen, those men and women, boys and girls behind prison walls physically, amen. He's talking about them, but he's also talking about prisoners, amen, prisoners in their own home, bound up in their thinking, bound up in their heart, bound up in their mindset, bound up, hallelujah, in their all kind of ways, amen, that the enemy comes to try and keep us, amen, tangled up, tied up, wrapped up in sin and in loneliness. God comes to set the captives free. Hallelujah. And I hear God saying this morning, you don't have to be a prisoner in your own home no more. And I'm not talking about your physical house. I'm talking about the home, your temple, glory to God. God sets the captives free. Hallelujah. No, nothing holding us bound in the temple in which God lives. Hallelujah. We're free. And whom the Son has made free is free indeed. The Lord gives sight to the blind. He allows us to see through the God lens. God allows us to see what he sees in your life. See, see, the world sees one thing about you based on your past. 
God sees what he sees about you based on his future for your life. God has a plan for your life. He knows what he has for your life. Hallelujah. A plan, amen, that offers you a future. Hallelujah. And a blessed end. Hallelujah. God knows the plans that he has for you, he said. Thoughts that are good and not of evil to give you a, a, an expected end. God has a plan for your life. And sometimes the weight of the world, sometimes the pressures of life, sometimes the challenges that come at us from, from north, south, east, and west, sometimes we can't see the plan. Hallelujah. We don't understand the plan because we're so bombarded with life. But God says, amen. That's why he wants us to look through the eyes that he had. We got to look through God's eyes to see what God sees in us and for us and through us. We got to see what God sees for our community, for our home, for our church, for our families. We got to see what God sees, hallelujah, and stand on that promise. There is a help and reassuring hope for those who trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. So I would invite you, my friends, when you get some time later on today or this week, go back and reread Psalms 146 and allow the Spirit of the Lord to speak to you and to reveal to you, amen, his promises that he has for you. Hear him promise to help you and give you hope. Hear him, amen, inviting you to take the risk to cry out to him and ask for help. Hear him, hallelujah, asking you, compelling you, amen, to bow down before him in humble adoration. Hear him, amen, calling you to look to him, hallelujah, for your hope. Look to him, look toward the hills with cometh your help, knowing that your help comes from the Lord. God has invited us to look to him because he has the ultimate power and authority to give you and to bring to you what you need for your life. God wants you to know this morning, family of God, that he hears your cry and he answers you in the midst of your valley. He gives you what you need regardless of your life circumstance. Yes, he is your ever-present reassuring hope, past, present, and future. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. He is your ever-present reassuring hope, past, present, and future. Amen. Psalms 46, 1 and 5. You say, how you know, Pastor? I'm going to tell you how I know. Because the Bible says that God is our refuge and our strength, a very ready help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth shakes and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, and though its waters roar and form, foam, though the mountains quake as a swelling pride, there is a river whose streams make the city of God happy, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is in Hallelujah is in the midst of her and she will not be moved. God will help her when morning down dawns. Somebody said joy comes in the morning. Glory to God. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You will not be moved. God will help you. Hallelujah. And he will answer you. Amen. Before the morning dawns. This is important, my friends, because when we look at verse 5 and 6, when it says that she shall not be moved, this verse picks up some of the key terms about moving, slipping, tottering, sliding, and roaring. When we look at verses 1 through 3, however, here, because of the presence of God, the forces of nature and the nations are no longer a threat to the people of God who dwell with him. God is saying we don't have to worry about what's going on. This coronavirus and all the things that's going on, all the wars and rumors of wars, all the things that's going on in our in our in our communities. Uh, I was looking to the news. Amen. Over the weekend, they had over 78 
people get shot in Chicago, Illinois. Hallelujah. They had over, uh, every day they had numbers. I'm talking about 20, 30, 40, 50 folk dying every day around this country at gun violence. Amen. And I hear God saying, amen, even though the world, the forces and the natures and the nations and all these things are roaring around us, things are slipping away it seems, life is being taken without a, without a thought. Hallelujah. I hear God saying this morning that the nations are no longer a threat to the people of God. We don't have to fear what man can do unto us, glory to God. The world is no longer a threat to the people of God for those who do well with him. That's why we encourage you to stay with the Lord. That's why we call on you to trust God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and spirit. That's why we ask you, amen, to walk in obedience to the will and the word of the Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. That's why we tell you, amen, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's why we remind you, according to Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, but standeth in the way of sin. Blessed is the man, hallelujah, who sitteth not in the scornful of the righteous. In the seed of the righteous. I think I messed that all up, glory to God, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. For in his law does he meditate day and night. That's why, my friends, we encourage you to study the word of God, to know the word of God. Get it down in your spirit. Get it down in your spirit that no matter what you're facing, glory to God, hallelujah, you can regurgitate that word. You can stand on the promises of God and you can shout like our brother shouted this morning, amen, when he cried out to God, hallelujah, as the songwriter prayed, as he danced before the Lord, Lord, deliver me, for this is my exodus. God gives us a way out. And the way out, my friends, is obedience unto the Lord. God says when we walk in obedience, he is in the midst of you and you will not be moved. Hallelujah. God will help you when the morning God. Hallelujah. Luke 19, 26. He said, that's what I mean when I ask you to risk your life and give more than you ever dreamed of. Play it safe and end up holding the bat. Matthews 25, 29 through 30. Take the thousand and give to the one who risks the most. And get rid of this play at sake. Who won't go out on a limb for the Lord? Throw him out into utter, utter darkness. Everyone who has more will be given. According to Matthew 13 and 12, you get a chance to take a look at it. When you get a chance, look at that word and, and study it and, and, and pray over it and allow God to minister to your heart. The Bible reminds us that the recipients of divine grace inherit immeasurable blessing in addition to eternal life and the favor of God. When we look at Romans 8 and 32, it explains it in more detail. The Bible also reminds us, but those who despise the riches of God's goodness, his forbearance and long suffering, burying them in the ground and clinging instead to the sorcery and transcendent goods of this world, will ultimately lose everything that they have. My friends, holding on to stuff that don't mount to nothing is not worth losing all that God has for our life. Can you say amen? Matthew 6 and 19, according to NIV, treasures in heaven. The writer reminds us, do not store up for yourselves treasures on this earth where moths and women destroy it and where thieves break in and steal. John 12 and 25, anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Romans 8, 32 and 39, so what do you think? With God on, your, on our side like this, how can we lose? If God doesn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition, exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, 
Is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us, for you, for me? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger, the one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, and is in the presence of God at this very moment, sticking up for us? Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, my friends, not trouble, not hard times, nor hatred, nor hunger, nor hum homelessness, nor bullying threats, not backstabbing, not gossip, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us cold-blooded because they hate you. We're sticking, other words, he said, we're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one, and none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, absolutely nothing, living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our maker, has embraced us. Somebody ought to stand on your feet and give God glory. Hallelujah. That no hell or high water, glory to God, can come between you and our God. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Yeah, I'm ab absolutely, absolutely sure, glory to God. Nothing can get between God and our love for him because of the way that he embraces us God embraces you God embraces you I'm talking to you that's lonely this morning I'm talking to you amen that's putting your life on the line trying to be embraced by the enemy trying to be embraced by something that make you feel good trying to be embraced by something amen that looks like it's all right amen but I'm telling you you want the embrace of God this morning He'll embrace you and love you like you've never been loved before. He'll comfort your heart. He'll restore peace and sanity to you. He'll bring joy into your life. You can trust his embrace. Hallelujah. There is absolutely nothing, living or dead, angelic or demonic, day or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing, my friend, can get between you and God's love because God embraces you. You belong to God and God belongs to you. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Risky obedience is the way we must go. And we call it risk. We call it risky. Because taking a risk with God, sometimes God will have you do some things and you'll be looking at this like, wait a minute, why he, why he want me doing this? Why he calling me to go this way? Why he asked me to say this and do that? And to us, it looks like, my oh God, man, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk losing friendship. I'm going to risk losing probably my job, I'm going to risk it. Yeah, yeah, you might end up, you got to risk everything for the Lord. Is there anything worth holding on to that if God asks you to risk it, that you won't give it up? He risked his life, glory to God, on Calvary's cross for you and for I. He left 42 burning generations, glory to God, to come down, amen, and, and surrender his life for a world and for a people who had no thought of him. What are we willing to give for the Lord? And while we wholly depend on the implicity of Christ for our salvation, the truth is we still struggle to the utmost to obey his word. I said we still struggle. All of us. We all still struggle. Come on, Holy Ghost. To obey God's word. Paul is very explicit when he shares this with us because uh, he, he understands, he said that the grace of Christ does not release us from the obligation 
to do everything in our power to live right. Can you say amen? In other words, my friends, living according to the sinful nature means giving in to the gratification of the desires of our sinful nature. Some desires are perfectly natural and necessary, such as the desire for food. But then there are some that are wrong. Those that are wrong, we must abstain from altogether. The others we may enjoy, but we must always be careful to keep our true affections focused on Christ. The suffering of the whole creation, the whole natural creation, including us, is groaning for a better order of existence that will be revealed in the day of God's completed redemption. When the body, this body of death, shall receive the ultimate freedom of heaven's glory. It is a grand conception of the work of Christ. My friends know that there is an intercession of the Spirit working on our behalf. But not only is this indwelling Spirit our pledge of resurrection and future glory, but through His prayers and on our behalf, we are assured that God will make everything that has happened and may set, I'm sorry, and may yet to happen, He will make it to work together for our good. If we may forget to pray sometimes, sometimes uh, we, we forget to read our words. Sometimes we, we just simply forget. But God wants us to know this morning, the Spirit never forgets. God will see us through. And so it's my prayer this morning that we uh, will never forget to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Romans 8, 31 and 39 reminds us, we just read it. Jesus died for us. He has forgiven us. He has given himself for us in the person of his spirit. And if we are his, no power on earth or in heaven or in hell can prevent him from bringing us to him in the eternal presence of God. We belong to God and we have his approval in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I close. It. There are two eyes of the heart. Two eyes of the heart, according to Matthew 6, 22 and 23. These difficult verses must be connected to the preceding verse, Matthew 6, 19 and 21. When you get a chance, go we'll read them because uh, if I read them, it's going to take more time. We, we'll never get out of here. But I want you to read them. Go back and read them. Read also Matthew 6 and 24. These passages make sense for the disciples and for the people of God. And what they're telling us, my friends, is that we must make a choice between competing treasures in our life. Jesus continues this theme of treasure by addressing the eye as a conduit to the inner person, the eye gate. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, the Bible says your whole body will be full of light. While the good eye and the bad eye can be understood physically to speak of a healthy and a diseased eye, we should follow the metaphorical meaning here, which means, according to the Greek and some Jewish writers, that the eye as a lamp that contained its own source of life that shone outward to eliminate the objects this indicates the vitality of life in a person. But here Jesus uses the eye in a different way, as a lamp that illuminates a person's inner life. There was a close connection between the heart and the eye in the Jewish, Jewish literature. By using uh, this symmetry in this passage, the good eye can either mean a generous eye, a person who is ready to give away one's wealth, or it can mean a single eye in the sense of singleness of purpose or undivided loyalty. The latter is more in line with the preceding and following sayings. Since the heart is the true repository of treasure, Jesus now indicates that when the eye focuses on something of value, it becomes the conduit that fills the heart with what has been focused upon. Let me read that again. 
since the heart is the true repository of treasure, Jesus now indicates that when the eye focuses on something of value, in other words, whatever is important to you, it then becomes the conduit that fills your heart with what has been focused upon. If the eye is good, it is the conduit that allows the heart to be filled with the light of God's goodness, God's treasure. But if there is also an evil eye, and if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. The word bad here connotes moral evil. The evil eye in the ancient world is one that is envious convicts. In other words, it, 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 it covets what belongs to somebody else. It's greedy. It's vicarious eye. It's something that's always looking to get what doesn't belong to them. This expression occurs similarly in the word of God. Hallelujah. And when we look at uh, verses, um, I'm sorry, when we look at Matthew 20, verse 15, we see a man, uh, what, 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 what this word really means in the literal expression when it talks about the evil eye. It's envious. And the pluralism here, my friends, indicates that once again, singleness of vision, but it is an evil vision. If a disciple's eye, if a believer's eye are fixed on earthly treasures as his or her value, personal significance, and earthly security, then the heart will likewise be filled with darkness. When we focus on something evil, the eye becomes the conduit by which evil fills the inner man. Question, my friends. Have you had your eyes checked lately? I mean the eyes of your heart. Songwriter says, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. The psalmist, open the eyes of my heart. What, 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 what is it, my friends, that you spend your time focusing on? What's drawing your attention? from God I hear God impressing upon us this morning that we take this time to refocus to redirect and to restart to jump start our life our thinking our hearts refocus our eyesight our eye gate amen look through the lens of God take the risk and be resilient Take the risk and walk in obedience to the word of God today. And I believe, amen, that as we focus our eyes and our minds and our wheel and our hearts on the things of God, I believe, amen, that our best days lie ahead of us. I believe, amen, that victory belongs to us. I believe that we can walk in victory and in triumph. I believe, amen, that God's will shall be done in our lives. Take the risk. Trust God. And let's declare that we'll walk in obedience to the will of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the word of God today. Lord, we bow before you in humble adoration. Thank you for urging, urging men and women, boys and girls, to put their hope and trust in you for deliverance and for help. Thank you, Father, for revealing your heart to us through your promises. For you keep your promises where every word is true based on your character and your ability. Father, we thank you for being our hope today and for hearing our cry for help. Let this moment not pass for those watching today, for those who will see this message later on throughout this week, who perhaps may not know or understand the message, the gospel message of Jesus Christ and how you came to save the world, the lost, and how you came 
to give life and give it to us more abundantly. Setting the captives free. Thanks for reminding us how you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever would believe upon you should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Father God, today, as the man of God comes to offer a prayer of salvation, we would ask that you would save today, Lord God. Remind men and women, boys and girls, all around the world, especially here in this community, that you make all the difference in our existence. Heavenly Father, we love you, sir. We honor and we bless your holy and righteous name. And in this, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ that we pray and we offer up this prayer. The people of God said amen, amen, and amen. My friends, go with God. Be at peace. Hallelujah. And walk in obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said amen. God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. Remember, this coming Saturday, we'll be looking forward to have you. Don't forget our Wednesday night service. Worship on Wednesday right here uh, on Saturday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday night. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Worship on Wednesday right here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. We look forward to seeing you then. Until then, God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Don't forget your cash app, TPHDIM number two, for those that want to give uh, your tithes and your offerings. Uh, those who want to sow a seed of love into the house of God, we invite you to do so now. And for those that are coming, Elder Ron is going to come and give you some direction. In Jesus' name, God bless you. And we love you and we thank God for you for your attention today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for that word on today. How he has moved and utilized his vessels on today. Amen. We're going to be quick today. We won't hold you long at all. I want to give an opportunity for those who might not be saved or want to be a part of this house. I'm looking around. It looks, everybody looks like family. Amen. I don't want to take it for granted, but everybody looks like family that's here today. Amen. But if there's someone here that wants to be a part of this family, this opportunity is for you at this moment. If you're here and you're not saved, if you're here and you want to make this your church home, raise your hand. We don't want to take it for granted. Amen. Everybody looks like family. Amen. We celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If that's you and you're online, please get in contact with us on this week. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. We want to be able to give you proper information about salvation and how you can be a member of this fellowship. Amen. Everyone standing as you get your gifts in your hand. Everyone standing. Everyone, everyone that can. Everyone that can. Amen. We won't be long moving on. We're going to, we are going to ask that today, once you give your gifts, that you would please exit the sanctuary. We need to shut the sanctuary down. Uh, so we need to. We ask that you would please, once you give your gifts, to please exit the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for your gifts and the givers on today. We pray, Lord, that you would use them, bless their hearts, that they might be able to give. God, with a happy spirit on today, that they might be able to bless you with the tithe that you blessed them with. Now, God, we ask that you would give us traveling mercies as we leave this place. God, protect us as we go our different ways. Allow this word to continue to minister to us. God, we lift up our pastor today that preached your word. Pray that you would give him back everything that he pulled out a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's start with this side, my left over here. Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Bless you. We got it, Amen. We got it. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Verse. Verse. 
All right, come on, sit the bar. Everybody on my right, come on. If you have your gifts, just fall in line behind Sister Yvonne. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to also 